I see five decks of cards, but each deck of card is slightly different. For example, this deck of cards is not opened. This one is opened and has all the wrong cards inside. This one's a super cheapo deck. This one is an aviator deck, and this one is a Hoil deck with a rubber band around it. What does all this have to do with coding? Well, if you were gonna code these decks of cards and say like, someone's gonna pick up a deck of cards and this time they're gonna pick up the bicycle deck with the wrong cards inside that's opened, you would have to repeat a lot of code over and over and over again. It's much easier if you had a blueprint for decks of cards in general. So for example, maybe you had a class, that class represents a deck of cards. It could be an aviator deck, it could be a cheapo deck, it could be the Hoyle deck with the rubber band, and it could be a brand new deck, or it could be this other deck that's the same as the brand new deck, but opened with the wrong cards inside. So that every time you want to represent that deck of cards in your code, you could do it with one word. And then somebody could open up that variable and check inside the variable and see the individual cards that you have. So your deck is going to be represented by a variable deck, which will be of type deck. What that means is that you have different types. This is a deck of cards. This deck of cards is also a deck of cards, but it's slightly different than this one. So let's write this code and show you what it would produce at the same exact time, as if it was going to produce real life results. Let's create a generic deck of cards that could represent any one of these decks of cards. Not all of them at the same time, just one of them. Let's pretend that this deck of cards is a generic deck of cards. So let's write the class that's going to represent that. Not the aviators in general, just a plain old deck of cards, which could be represented by any one of these decks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write class, deck, open and close. Once you do that, you now have a deck of cards that can represent any one of these decks of cards, any one of these, except we only have the blueprint what we need to do is create a deck of cards. So right now we just have a blueprint for the decks of cards. Nothing has been created yet. So this is what our world looks like. Now we're going to create that individual deck. So let's create it. We'll create a variable called deck. And we could even make this a constant, but we'll make it a variable. And now we just need to create a new deck. The way you do this is you're gonna write the name of the class, which is uppercase deck, and open and close parentheses. As soon as you do that, bam, a new deck of cards has been created. Not necessarily aviators, but a deck in general. In fact, it could have gone bam, or it could have gone bam, doesn't matter. We now have a deck of cards. It has been created. Now the problem with this class, and it's not necessarily a problem, but it doesn't have a whole lot of details as to which one of these decks it would actually be. Is it gonna be the cheapo ones? Is it gonna be the bicycles? Is it gonna be the aviators? If it is that bicycles, is it gonna be a new set of bicycles or is it going to be an old set of bicycles? We don't know yet. All we know is that one deck has been created. Let's create a property so that we know the type of the deck so that we know whether it was the bicycles that were created or which one. So we'll create what's called a property inside of that class that will represent some detail of the class that represents that of cards manufacturer. Let's write manufacturer. So we have var or let manufacturer and that's going to be a string. And let's make it by default bicycle. So now we have a new deck of cards that's going to be a bicycle. And we've created it. And the way that we can see that it is, in fact, a deck of bicycle cards is we just say deck.manufacturer. And you could see that that will code complete. And when you look at what it returns, you'll see that it actually returns bicycle. So now we've created a 
deck of bicycles. Now we have some discrepancy because this is a bicycle deck, which you can see by the shine and by the wrapping here, that it is a new bicycle deck. And this is an old bicycle deck with the wrong cards in it. How can we represent whether the deck is a new or an old deck? What we can do is we can make another property. Let's call this one old, and it can be a Boolean. We could call it new or old. We could call it is old. We could call it new. It doesn't matter. The point is whether it is old or new, and that value is going to be a Boolean. A Boolean is something that is either true or false. You can't say, did you go to the store today? And you say, well, I kind of went to the store. That's not a Boolean. A Boolean is, did you go to the store today? Yes or no. In Objective C, Booleans are actually represented by the word yes or no. In Swift, Booleans are represented by true or false. So let's make this variable old. And by default, let's make it false. That means it's not old, it's new. So now when that new deck is created, we have a new deck of bicycle cards. And in fact, if another deck comes in and that type is aviators, and we test it against the bicycles, the types won't match. And this one is not new, it's open, so it's old. So it won't match on that either. So now we have two properties of the bicycle cards. Let's make one more property here, which is gonna be the actual cards inside of the deck. Inside of that deck are a bunch of cards, and those cards could be, let's see here, what do we have here? We have, let's say, 52 cards here, and they all have different types. What that could be is an array, or it could be what's called a dictionary what we need is a container for all of these cards. So let's get a container and we'll make that a property as well. We'll call that cards. So in the deck class, we can create var cards, and that's gonna be equal to an array of cards. Now we don't have a card class yet, which could be the individual cards inside of the deck. Let's create that as well. So right now, our new deck of cards has been created. What we need is a way to represent an individual card. So let's create a card class. Notice we have not created the card yet. We may only create the blueprint and then create the card. So what we can do is we can say class card. What kind of properties do we need for a card? Well, we probably just need the suit meaning is it clubs, hearts, diamonds, or spades? Or is it the joker? Let's leave jokers out for now. We'll just make it a suit, which is a string. So we can make a property called suit. And we also need the number, which could be represented by a string. Why don't we represent it by a number? Because it could be a jack, a queen, a king, or an ace. We'll represent that by a string. We have our card representation. Now, down below, we can create a new card and we can add it to our card class. So we'll say var card with a lowercase c is equal to a new card, boop. And that card has been created. And if we set a default number for that card, let's make it the two of hearts, then this is the type of card that will be created. We could have said a new card is created and it's the jack of hearts, but instead we set the default to be the two of hearts. Now we can add that card to our deck of cards. So we have our deck and we have our dot cards, which is a collection of individual cards. Let's make sure we fix that up. And now we have an array of individual cards that represents the card class. And now we're going to place that card of the new deck inside that deck of cards. So we can say deck.cards.append. And now our deck of cards has that card inside of it.
And that is how you represent things in code.